This is Los Angeles, and I'm viewing it from George's Gap, just off of the Angeles Crest Highway. And my plan is to take a trail down tonight to a few water holes. These insects are pretty interesting looking, in my opinion. I think they're called potato bugs or something like that. But uh, yeah, I know bats feed on them, so pretty cool. This is one of the Clear Creek water holes. Uh, not the most spectacular right now, and uh, not too much flow in Clear Creek compared to even later last year, I think that's the last time I was here. I think it was maybe 10 months ago, according to the video. Uh, if you go down this way, you'll have to probably jump down a waterfall, which I did do on my video last time I was here. But I'm going to make my way up uh, the Hoyt Mountain route and uh, try to access the creek from below. Here's that lower pool, you know. Um, definitely murky and still not very much flow in this one. This one's starting to look a little more clear, uh, still kind of frothy on the top. I'm just going to go up a little ways until I get to the base of that waterfall pool. And uh, whatever that's like, I'll take a little soak there. Well, this will have to do for now. Uh, I bet in the spring this waterfall was flowing a bunch, you know. It's not a huge one, but definitely a nice one. Uh, anyways, you know, now, not so great. All right, so, uh, yeah, time for another... Uh, nighttime story on the trail. Um, as you may be aware, I did go back through a few photos and there's a bunch to choose from. You know, uh, but I think I think the story I'm going to start with this time is going to be related to what I was planning on doing uh, next weekend. So if you're not aware, you know, the last two weekends I did some trips. Uh, they weren't particularly long, but I've been wanting to do some longer excursions. Uh, and there was one that, you know, I had in mind about, you know, maybe starting at the trailhead to Bridge to Nowhere and then going up uh, the East Fork of the San Gabriel River all the way to Vincent Gulge and then going back down and, you know, exploring Iron Fork, Fish Fork, a bunch of the forks, you know, and uh, there's a lot of really wild mines I know about there, too, that would be really cool to go into. Um, the unfortunate thing is, you know, I don't actually go to the East Fork very often. And a lot of that's just, uh, I guess there are a number of issues, you know, uh, parking's always kind of a pain, especially if you don't get there super early, you know, uh, it's just challenging. And the trail, the trail is real crowded too. I don't mind, I don't mind crowds, but it does get, get a little wild there, especially between, you know, the trailhead and, uh, bridge to nowhere. So, you know, it is crowded, especially for me when I'm jogging. Um, and another thing, you know, there's the reason I'm not doing this uh, on the weekend is uh, wildfires, right? So I've seen a lot of a lot of great videos recently um, by, you know, Lopez Explora, Hike Bites, uh, Hiker 2000, checking out the water pools, you know, Bridge to Nowhere, all that good stuff, you know. And uh, unfortunately, the last two times I've wanted to go, you know, you get these fires and it just, it shuts things down, you know. And sure enough, the one weekend I'm able to do it, you know, big wildfire the bridge fire so that's out there now um uh but anyways you know can't do that at the moment um it's unfortunate you know i let i don't mind when areas get crowded but sometimes you just get so many people that you wind up getting some stupid people that just wind up setting the forest on fire and it just kills it for everyone so uh so yeah um but anyways bridge to nowhere you know when you go a little past the bridge uh, you start getting into these narrows and this reminded me of a neat little story uh, cautionary tale to tell you about my experience with narrows which isn't isn't really all that much um so anyways uh the story sort of starts uh when i was at the santa barbara city college i did you know geology there for about two years a uh, wonderful department by the way but there's this trip called the colorado plateau trip and uh it's a really nice trip um you know, you get to go to all these really, really gorgeous places uh, on the Colorado Plateau. That includes, obviously, you know, like Arizona, Capitol Reef, Grand Canyon, Muley Point. You know, I'm, I'm just going to I'm going to put a bunch of photos here, you know, and just, you know, look at them. Some of them are just the areas we go, you know, spectacular. I'll remember that trip for a long time. Uh, but anyways, you know, there was this one time we went to, to Zion. I think it was for about a day. And, uh, you know, a subset of us decided to check out the Narrows there, you know, because it's, you know, it's one of those spots at the very end of the park. You go up, you get these gorgeous views of the Narrows. So I'll, I'll put a few pictures. I don't have all that many, actually, but I'll put some of them here. 
Um, and so like there were a few of us, I think my friend and I uh, were kind of jogging up the trail a little ways, uh, but it started at some point, you know, unexpectedly there was a bunch of hail. You know, and it was like, it, they were a little, little bigger than marbles, smaller than golf balls. Uh, so I decided to kind of take cover. So did my friend. Um, but yeah, we were actually, we had, uh, you know, had these geology lessons on this trip. And one of the things we had learned about, uh, slot canyons or narrows is that when you get rain, the water level rises very, very fast, you know, and it can be very dangerous, deadly even, you know, people who do canyoneering, you know, or explore, explore narrows a lot, probably know this pretty well. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, I was aware of this and we were like, yeah, we got to get out of here. We booked it. We booked it out there. And we, we've passed some people in the other, other parts of the group. And even with the hail, I was like, man, I got to get out of here, <laughs> you know, cause I knew, I knew, you know, I had a feeling that if I didn't, you know, flash flood, you know, it could happen and we could all get washed away. And I think there was like another student at the time who said, you should stay put, stay put, you know, and it, it kind of made sense because there was a bunch of hail that was definitely potentially dangerous, but you know, well, a few little like, you know, marbles to the head versus flash flood. I just I had to, I just, I just had to keep going. So I did that. Um, and I got out of the canyon, you know, thankfully I was encouraging other people to get out just in case there was a flash flood and, you know, but what I heard from the group of people who stayed in, you know, no offense to them. They're, they're great. You know, I love them all. Um, I'm gonna have to beat that out. <laughs> Maybe an acorn. All right. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess occasionally big things fall in the water here. I gotta be careful about predators though. <laughs> okay, sorry, you know, I did, I did stories about predators. It'd be bad if that happened. Um, I'm ready though, I am ready. Uh, <laughs> anyways, uh, yeah, so back to the story. Um, I got out, but my friends, they came back, a few of my friends, and they were, they were like, oh my god, they, you know, it looked like something wild had happened to them, and there wasn't a crazy flash flood, the water did rise, but people were able to get out there, out of there, uh, out of the narrows, but what I heard, you know, from, from the people, uh, was that there was this huge, huge rock that fell, you know, hundreds of feet down from the, you know, upper parts of the narrows, and it nearly, smashed one of my friends you know and i guess he was really shook up like he was telling me that that he had to move quick like a reptile like to get out of the out of the path of this rock <laughs> so uh it was uh it was pretty wild you know um and yeah he 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 certainly you know part of him wasn't the same um yeah keeping an eye out for predators <laughs> uh yeah i i had heard um i had heard later that uh that he, yes, yeah, little little concerned about that falling noise. I heard. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, he he was never really quite the same, and hopefully nothing crazy happens to me right now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so he uh, apparently there was like a storm a little while later, and. Um, Apparently he kind of got the, the shakes, the jitters or something, maybe PTSD from that situation, you know? So, uh, you know, I've never, I've never, I've had, so actually making the videos, uh, when I was at the Sespe Hot Springs, um, I was in that, that one near the waterfall and a rock actually fell and almost hit my head. And there was another canyon I was exploring out in Tahunga. Um, it was one of the ones where I kind of went up Clear Creek at the end, which is actually this creek. You know, if you go up, and climb up some of the waterfalls eventually you'll get here but yeah on that on that excursion there's that one waterfall uh near um near grizzly flats kind of where i was going up to the waterfall and on the way up to the waterfall there was a little bit of an avalanche and i dodged it just right on time but yeah anyways uh good stuff you know um got to be careful around canyons and uh obviously for other reasons you know predators who knows i think i'm fine i've i've never had an issue with that i have bright flashlights you know and uh but you know you just never know and you got to be careful you know if uh you got to be aware check out your surroundings you know to be honest i think uh these flashlights are quite bright uh, you know and i have this headlamp too so 
animals, when they're walking around, you know, they're, they're nocturnal, a lot of these predators. And so if you shine a bright light in their face at night, oftentimes they'll be like, oh, what the hell is that? You know, and uh, but yeah, anyways, <laughs> nice soaking in Clear Creek. Uh, it's a little murky, but honestly not too bad. And uh, yeah, let's uh, head back and, you know, hopefully I'll find a few more places for stories. I feel like Clear Creek's not really a popular spot anymore. So maybe, maybe Switzer Falls next time or even Bonita or I don't know, somewhere near Tahunga. Uh, the issue is, you know, I'm trying to do these quickly since they're at night to save time. And I don't want to drive very far. But I do have some more good stories for you guys. And uh, just because I'm not doing Bridge to Nowhere this weekend doesn't mean I'm not doing something very, very cool this weekend. So I have some plans. I'm excited. I think it's even a, you know, an even better trip. And uh, yeah, but, you know, I, you know, we'll see. <laughs> so hopefully there's no forest fires uh, where I'm planning on going, you know. All right, that was nice. Uh, made it a little more murky than it was before. And uh, yeah, a little startled by whatever fell in. But uh, nonetheless, you know, it's a steep area, kind of unstable, you know, and uh, so it's not surprising to me if, you know, you just get a little bit of uh, erosion here. Nonetheless, it's good to be aware of your surroundings and shine the lights. Uh, a lot of animals, you know, their, their eyes will glow, so you'll be able to see them with the right flashlight. Uh, but yeah, gonna make my way back down to the trail and then back up to George's Gap. 